Okay, so in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the material shell for the Raspberry Pi 4. And this experience has kind of been a little bit of a bummer for me because I do wish it performed a little bit better than it does. But let's dive straight into the video. So first of all, let me explain what we will be looking at today. So this is called the Material Shell, and it is a modern desktop interface for Linux, and it is installed on top of the GNOME desktop environment. The aim of this shell is basically to increase productivity and to just be a simple window tiling manager like thing while being easier to use, at least in my opinion, it is easier to use. It is also super easy to install. You basically just go to this link right here, and with a couple of clicks, you can have it installed on top of your GNOME desktop environment. And this build is not specific for the Raspberry Pi 4, meaning this can be installed on your x86 PC as well, which I have actually been using for a little while now on my main PC after seeing this video by YouTuber Chris Titus Tech explaining his experience with this on Fedora, which I actually did the same thing on my PC, and I have really been enjoying using this on a daily basis with my own PC. So I was like, huh. How would this perform on the Raspberry Pi 4? So I went ahead, I installed Manjaro ARM, as you can see right here. I installed Manjaro ARM on my Raspberry Pi 4, and I did overclock my CPU to 2 GHz to try to give it a little bit more performance, and I installed the Material Shell desktop interface on top of it. So we are going to be exploring it, seeing what we can do with it, and see how it actually performs on the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's dive into how this works, what it does, and everything like that. Let's start out with the whole desktop interface, how it looks. So first of all, this doesn't look like anything you've probably seen before since it is definitely an interesting concept, but it is something that you will get used to after some time. So right here, I have a window open and my terminal is full screen right here. So I could open up the files manager in a separate window right here, and I can switch between these with just a click of the button and it looks really nice. I could open up another application right here, such as, let's say I wanted to open up the settings application. I'll open up settings right here, click it to launch, and it will just launch in this window. But there are some bugs, especially that I've noticed, at least with this version on the Raspberry Pi, where some applications don't wanna open. It doesn't seem to do this as much on my main PC. I'm not really sure why it's doing it. And it could be due to the Raspberry Pi or this version of Manjaro. But I can open up Firefox in this window and eventually Firefox will launch in this window. And normally there are actually some animation effects going between these windows, but Manjaro ARM GNOME actually has these disabled by default so that it performs better on the Raspberry Pi 4, which is, it's okay with me to get better performance. I'm okay with not having animations. But see, we have three when applications open up right here and the terminal icon, I could open up another one right here, such as the files application here i have files open up right here and my terminal on the same desktop window but i could click right here go to let, let's say split i can have them equally split right down the middle on my desktop but if that's not for you you could basically pull this put it on this side or even put it on the bottom maybe no i'm not sure but and but you could also make it where it's going to float so here we could have floating windows where you can move this anywhere on the desktop that you want more like a traditional desktop interface if that's what you're going for but i personally would rather keep it on something like that and there is also maximize where we completely maximize the window like we had originally so there are definitely some cool options right here and i do really enjoy being able to tweak this and get different interfaces like let's say I was working my terminal right here. I was wanting to install an application like RPI-Imager. I could install that right here, type in my password, and then I could go, go to this window right here, complete my web browsing, and not even be bothered by that terminal window whatsoever. I could switch back here right here. Oh, it wants to install, hit Y, bam. I go right here, and I could just work again in this web browser while not having that terminal icon messing up my web browsing experience whatsoever. So it is definitely a really cool feature that I do enjoy so far with this desktop. It gives you a clean desktop experience while not like the normal traditional desktop with all those floating windows. It can definitely get messy, but this will just help you keep your work much more organized. And you can move the windows around and stuff too if you wanted to. But can you configure the material shell, shell at all? And the answer to that would be yes, you can definitely configure it. So when you don't have anything open on a window like this, we have this nice little search application opener thing that looks really nice in my opinion. 
but this is like i said this isn't a gnome extension so i'm going to open up the extensions and application right here and we're going to go into the settings of this application so here we are in the extension settings but we are going to want to open up the split right here since there is going to be a separate window launching in a second so i'm going to open up here we have material shell i'm going to open up the settings application right here and this should just launch on the side for me hopefully i'm not sure it did not split this maybe because it's like an application inside of an application or something like that but that's all right so we are i'm going to make this a little bit larger and let's go through through some of the settings that come with the material shell so as for the theme you can change it dark or light or primary i'll leave it at dark right now primary ui color which is going to be like the color right here i personally really enjoy this greenish color right here so i'm going to switch it to that select and as you can see my color changed right here which is kind of honestly kind of cool you can change the horizontal panel position from the top to the bottom which feels a little bit strange honestly to me i'm gonna leave that on the top i like it like that maybe just because i'm used to it being on the top that's why i like it more but yeah panel size we could change the panel size to something like something a little smaller like 40 oh like 40 and as you can see they would get a little bit smaller which isn't a bad thing honestly the smaller it takes up less space on your desktop so you may actually prefer having a smaller panel size panel opacity and this is something that i personally would definitely change i would change the opacity to something like 60 and hit enter once you get 60 and this is just going to make the whole thing look a lot better okay so the panel opacity did change but since my wallpaper is really dark you can't really tell so i'm going to open up another window right here and try to open up settings hopefully it will launch so if we can get settings open right here we'll be able to change the wallpaper to something a little bit more lively a little bit more bright <laughs> okay so i just experienced a pretty large bug right there my system basically just logged me out completely i have no idea why it did that and then I couldn't get the settings application open, so I actually had to turn off the material shell right here. And then I had to go right click change background. And then I got the settings application to actually launch. So there definitely are some bugs with this, as you can see, which is a little bit of a bummer. But it's obviously not performing the best on the Raspberry Pi either. So we actually don't have any wallpapers right here, so I'm going to go ahead to the web and grab one real fast. Okay, so I have downloaded a wallpaper and installed it on my system finally after working through some of those annoying bugs. But now, as you can see, my desktop looks phenomenal. That panel opacity really does a lot. I love being able to see my wallpaper through these sidebars right here. I just think it looks so good. But of course, that's just my, my own opinion. But let's head back into some of the settings that you can change for the material shell. You can change the vertical panel icon style if you wanted to. You can change the vertical panel icons color which is something that you may want to do see by default they are gray meaning that they don't really have any color but if you want to see their real color you can always turn that setting on and see their original intended color with that comes like with your icon theme so i'm pretty sure if you did change your icon theme these colors these setting like the look of these applications would also change with them as well but you can change the taskbar item style from full to name to what do we do what's icon oh so icon if you don't want to see that long name right there you can change it to icon you can go to full or you could go just to name and that i don't know what name does it looks the same as full <laughs> a little interesting right there but yeah you can change the surface opacity i'm gonna leave that as it is and you can blur the background so as you can see right here i can clearly see what the background looks like at least that part of it but if i blur it it just it looks a little bit different it's a little dimmer but some people may enjoy the blur too i personally for this wallpaper don't but for some wallpapers having that blur effect might be cool and you know there are some more things in here and i'm really not going to go through all of these since there are a lot but those were some of my favorite appearance settings for the material shell so now i have it in a way that i think looks really beautiful i love this desktop the way it looks and i just really do love it but now let's talk about performance and is this usable on the raspberry pi 4 so as you could see from the title i basically said it's a bummer that it doesn't perform that well but let me show you what the actual real life performance is so here in the terminal i'm gonna open up htop and see what we're running so by default we are only using 607 40 megabytes of ram which i said only 
but that is very, very good for a gnome distro. Manjaro Gnome is one of the best gnome distros for the Raspberry Pi 4. Like, for example, before installing a material shell on Manjaro, I actually tried it out on the Pop OS 21.10 on my Pi 4, and that performance was not good at all. And I'm pretty sure that the RAM uses just over one gigabyte on that distro. So yeah, that is really awesome that we have that, that lower RAM usage and everything else looks pretty okay in here. And I do want to mention that I am overclocked again. Just so you know, the performance may have been increased a little bit just because I am overclocked to 2 gigahertz, and I am definitely not at 4K right now. I don't know why it shows my real resolution as 4K. As you guys can see too, my desktop isn't large enough to actually be 4K. That is definitely a little bit strange. But what about the everyday usage? Is this usable? I mean, yeah. So let's say I open up files right here. I could open up, open up another window right here with Firefox. Is this usable? Totally. I mean, I, I would say even Windows on the Raspberry Pi is usable. But are you going to enjoy it? And that's the question. So here we can op we could open up Google.com right here. And you see it does take a little bit to load for sure. It's not the best experience and I definitely do experience some lag. But what if we went to look at Big Buck Bunk? Oops, what am I doing right there? <laughs> Mistake right there. What if we went to Big Buck Bunny and tried to watch a YouTube video? on the distro let's see how that would actually perform so i'm just going with the 720p version right here so hopefully everything there is good and while that's loading we can actually open up another tab and just see how a real day performance would actually be like if we were to use this on a daily basis so we'll have that tab loading right here and here's big buck bunny let's play it let's try to go to 720p and as you can see my browser is really holding up right now Okay, let's try to toggle the thing. Here we go. We're at 720p right now. So that was a long experience to try to get that configured. Your stats for nerds. We'll skip to the middle right here. And let's see how this distro handles video playback. So this is a 24 FPS video. And we are dropping 41 frames out of 1,000 out of... So we're dropping quite a few frames even on a 720p video on this distro. But of course, this could be due, due to Manjaro and not really the whole material shell stuff but I'm not really sure completely. But is this great video playback? Honestly, no. This is not the best video playback ever on the Raspberry Pi 4. It's probably not the complete worst, but I would say it's tor It's not. It's definitely kind of far from being watchable or enjoyable at least, especially at 720p since 720p should not be this hard to be watching on a Raspberry Pi 4. So that is definitely a bummer. Web browsing. You're gonna do okay with web browsing, but you can see I just have some lags right here with my mask, my mouse. Like my mouse just freezes up, which is all honestly a little bit of a bummer. But you can, you can, it will work. It will work. I mean, it's not the best, but it will do the job okay. So I mean, yeah, as you can see, performance isn't the best, even with animations disabled, like I said. But is it usable? It is usable. Okay, that's usable. Okay, so let's head into the conclusion of this video. Should you be using Material Shell on the Raspberry Pi 4? I mean, totally, you totally could. Is it going to be the best experience ever? No, but it will do the job done. So it's not completely terrible, nor is it completely perfect. So it's just there in the middle. I really do enjoy using this. I think it is an amazing project, and I really have loved using Material Shell. I think the devs have done a really incredible job. It looks really awesome. I love the whole experience. I love the idea of it. And I just think it's an amazing project. So if you do get the time, I would recommend trying out on your Raspberry Pi 4. At least if you're someone who likes to just test out different things. If you want a little bit of fun, try out the material shell. It is fun. It is enjoyable. And it's cool to test out on your Raspberry Pi 4. So any questions about it, let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, hit that like button. And if you loved it, a subscribe to the channel would be spectacular. Thanks for watching.